Hello. We're filming with Ricky Gervais and we're having a problem with the drilling. I wonder if you can... Well, that's going to do anything. Okay. You're filming... Stop. Oh, you're filming with Ricky Gervais. <laughs> uh, cut. Stop the drilling. He said the two magic words in Hollywood. Ricky Gervais. Oh, the drilling stop. Thanks very much. All right? <laughs> I can't imagine why he'd want to, to speak to me for Channel 4, no disrespect. I, I know that he doesn't like interviews or I think he's quite a grumpy man. You know that he's seen The Office and Extras, don't you? He told me he'd seen it. Yeah, definitely. He's not going to go, oh no, I thought, no, ah, oh, I thought it was Billy Connolly I was, okay, good. The Office has made Ricky Gervais a global comedy star. It's shown in 80 countries, and its DVD sales make it the most successful BBC comedy export of all time. Extras has also gone international. He's the only British comedian to write and star in an episode of The Simpsons and win a Golden Globe. But he's turned down lead roles in Hollywood and multi-million pound commercial contracts. So how does he cash in on worldwide stardom? He meets his heroes. And I'll have a vanilla... One of the vanilla bullshit things, you know, you, whatever you want, some vanilla bullshit, latte, kappa thing, you know, whatever you got. Larry David co-created the most successful sitcom in history. Why don't they have salsa on the table? What do you need salsa for? Salsa is now the number one condiment in America. Do you know why? Because people like to say salsa. Excuse me, do you have any salsa? We need more salsa. Where's the salsa? No salsa. The show, which was written by Larry, regularly got 30 million viewers. Following this huge success, he chose to shun the networks and epic ratings to go to HBO and have complete creative control, writing and starring in his own series, Curb Your Enthusiasm. It's a cafe latte? Mm -hmm. What is that? Milk? Milk. Uh, milk and coffee. Coffee, yeah. Milk and coffee? Who would have thought? No, milk and coffee? Oh were. my God, what a, what a drink! This limo's getting wolf whistles from other cars. This is so beautiful. At least it was like a full body shot and other things happening. If that had been my face, think how big that would have been. My big, fat, 100-foot face. That would have been scary. I'm thin in America. <laughs> but I still wear black. Boy, and I found out I went straight up the stairs and got it for you. I, I can this. help you out with shaving, by the way. Oh, I want to film this. Great. I thought we are filming this. No, no, no. I have great I'm, shaving I'm gonna bring techniques. You're going to wait there, and then I was going to bring um, you in. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought we were rolling. Hi. We're doing another take? We are. <laughs> I but aren't we just we filming this? Huh? We're, we are filming this. Oh, we're, we're, we're filming. Do I have to act? Do you want me to come in and act now? Yeah, yeah. What do we do? Do you mind if we film oh. you while you're putting on a no, bit of... No, Great, no, okay. I'm just going to take down a little bit of the redness. What redness? <laughs> no, it's true. It's on my nose, is that a little red? I thought there was something wrong with that. I had to go to a dermatologist. Yeah. Is, this, um, is this weird? Two men just talking about their skin conditioned while being filmed, being made up? Is that... That's all right, isn't it? You know, two men is as secure as, as, as we are. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's a problem. Maybe we're metrosexual. Are we? What's that? Uh, that's, that's... that's a guy who's very involved with, with creams. <laughs> and very moisturizing. And not a heterosexual, but he's, he takes very Absolutely. good care of himself, but good grooming. He thinks nothing of a, a Brazilian. And I like to be, I like to be <laughs> as spick and span down there as any, as any woman you'll care to meet. I have to say, I haven't used the word Brazilian in my life. <laughs> Now, the onus is pretty much on you for most of this, isn't it? You know, you're the interviewer, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm the guy who should be really relaxed about this. Absolutely. I don't want to have to feel like I'm on a date here, right? Oh, the I'm not on a date. Just because I talked about Brazilians, that, yeah. that was... I wasn't bringing that up to, to no, fish no, no, for compliments. No, 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 I mean, I... No, I'll, I'll, no. no. I'm going to give you a little chapstick. What's that? Chapstick for chaplets? No. I think that if you st uh, use that chapstick stuff, yeah. I think you'll, uh, you'll start getting chap lips all the time. I really do. Because you assume that your lips are being moddy-coddled and they need to gather and be a man. <laughs> <Exactly>. Yeah. 
But um, thanks very much for doing this. The only reason I'm doing it is because it's in England. Sure. And nobody I know will be watching. So there's a great freedom to that. Right. I, I was hoping that it's because you would And also, me yes, and my work. yeah, no, of course. Uh, obviously, that has something to do with it, yeah. yeah. When I was doing stand-up, I would never let anybody come see me. I only wanted strangers in the audience. I couldn't stand it if I saw a face, and I, if, I, if I recognized the face. It would throw me. Uh, I uh, went to see um, some comedy um, last night. I sort of just snuck over to the, um, the comedy store on, really? on Sunset. I saw eight acts. Every single one of them, their catchphrase was, what the fuck? What the fuck? Right? <laughs> and they all talked about their ethnic parenting. It was, uh, it was like, if it was a yeah. Korean bloke, it was like, yeah. oh, my dad would go, why do you want to go into comedy? The Jamaican, why do you want to go into comedy? It was just, it was like, just cha change the race. And then you just, what the fuck? Every single one of them. Can you say fuck on your show? <clears throat> yeah. You can? Yeah. Do, do you want to? No, do you? No, not this show. Oh, um. Extras. Extras, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we keep it down. I mean, yeah, it's, it, I, try, I try and keep my, my mind down. Yeah. Can I just um, remind you of a, a scene, uh, the, the opening of the restaurant, which was oh, like, yeah, an, yeah, yeah, well, right. like an yeah. opera of swearing. Yeah. Fuck hell, shit face, cocksucker, asshole, son of a bitch! Maybe one day I'll get a chance to do something good for somebody like that. Scum-sucking motherfucking whore! Cock! Cock! Chisholm! Grandma! Cock! Bum! Fuck! Turd! Fart! Cunt! Piss! Shit! Bugger! And balls! Damn it! Hell! Crap! Shit. You goddamn motherfucking bitch! Fuck you, you car wash cunt! Now, <laughs> car wash cunt is is yeah. poetry. That's that's she came up with that idea. <laughs> yeah. 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 What do you think about swearing in in comedy? I don't like to abuse it at all. I know just from doing stand up that it's the easiest way to get cheap and easy laughs. I think it can be funny. It definitely makes anything funnier. It does. There's no doubt about it. Once you once you inject a fuck into your speech, it makes it funnier. It gives it it gives it an emphasis and it gives it a shock. What did you have? I am afraid to say I had an ace high. Ace high. Oh, you cunt! What a cunt! I can't believe that you didn't go in with that. I, I, I just Larry. thought that she oh, What a hand! That's a great hand for this game! Um. Wow! Who are your um, comedy heroes and influences? Um, <clears throat> when I was growing up, I loved the Bilko show. For the life of me, Sergeant Bilko, I can't understand how he lost. You know, lots of people go to the races, win a little, lose a little. Not us. We brought our own expert, born and raised on a farm in Kentucky, knows all about horses. <laughs> Joined the army. Why? So he could pick a horse for us that came in absolutely last. Good boy. <laughs> he was doing what, what we were doing in a way, doing these guys who are saying and doing things that nobody else would say and do nasty things and un yeah. being unlikable and, exactly, and, and yeah. being deceptive. I taught my platoon to put enough a bankroll, and I'll sing. Half of it is gone. How am I going to face that platoon? Hiya, boy. Only an enemy's liable to collapse. <laughs> Not him, Sarge. He's a real thoroughbred. He's got courage. Yeah, well, let him face the platoon. <laughs> it's the same plot yeah. every week. He's trapped. He's in this, you know, it could yeah. be prison or whatever. It just happens to be the army. It, it, it's, it, it laid out the blueprint for sitcom, I think. I, I love Bill Coe. And I loved, um... Abbott and Costello. Chuck, what? Do we have to sleep in this room? Why, you're not afraid, are you? No. Well, if you see a pair of pants flying through the air, don't grab them. Why? I'll be in them! I, I loved uh, Abbott and Costello. I really, I did, but I always felt that I had Laurel and Hardy. Well, here's another nice kettle of fish you pickled me in. I think they were too sophisticated for me when I was a kid. There was something I didn't quite latch on to about them. I don't know why. It's the relationship that I love. You know, I'm with this idiot. It's almost like... Uh, I'd be okay if it wasn't for this fool. And it's, it's the way they share...
that screen time that stands the idiot and he says stupid things. And Ollie can't believe he says those things. Well, what's the matter? Where's that clock? What clock? The clock you paid $290 for. <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous. Where would I get $290? <laughs> Where's that clock? I don't know. He said he was going to keep it in the dark. And if I didn't keep my mouth shut, then nobody would be any the wiser. Oh! Now, why didn't you keep your trap shut? And I think there's a certain amount of that with, with you and Jeff. It, you, you take turns. Sometimes you're the Stan, where you say the wrong thing and it's, it's out there. And sometimes you're the, why do you say that? What, you're, you're an idiot. Oh, oh, my God! What are you... Oh, here. oh needed this. Susie's here. Oh. What? Oh, what is Susie? going on here? What are you Hi. doing here? The amount of sleep that I've lost... What are about you doing here? Listen, and I'll tell you. Sammy's shelf has been on my mind... I've always thought the shelf was loose. And you brought Larry to help you with the shelf? I know a lot about shelving. I, I put up all the shelves in my house. And you put the shelves up in your... I find that hard to He knows to a lot Larry. about shelving. No, I put them all up. And Mr. I was California just, I was closets you know, over here, here all of a sudden? His, his, uh, the shelves here. Well, get the hell... Leave! Jeff, in a way, has a tough role on my show because he's a confidant. Sometimes he's just there to be helpful to the story. You know? It's such a useful character, though, yeah. isn't it? Because he, cause he yes. knows everything. And, I, uh, I couldn't do the show without that character. It's almost like setting you up. You know, it, it, it's sending on your way. And, uh, yeah. Now, Cheryl is so adept at She's doing great. that kind of thing. Oh, by the way, did you tell Wanda she has a big ass? I didn't tell Wanda she, she had did. a big ass. She'll always know exactly how to make a scene funnier. Why? What's the big deal? What if I did say she has a big ass? So what? That's not so terrible. What's the matter with a big ass? I like big asses. There's no problem. <laughs> you like big asses? I don't mind a big ass. I mean, no, hey, no, no not no, necessarily no, no. big. This is interesting. No, what? You love big asses? No, I don't love big asses. How you know, big do you like them? I like them just the regular. I like them just like yours, okay? Oh. Uh, uh, that's because like mine them. is really big. No, it's like not big. really big. It's not. It's, uh, it's good size. You said. You just said I love big no, asses I and know. I like yours. And completely gives herself over to it. No ego at all. Always knows where to take a scene to, to get it funnier. Well, no, there's the nothing kinky. Nothing's unfolding now. Nothing's Which unfolding. Which is interesting. After years together, I'm just finding out... What are you, like, crazy? No. That's so untrue. That Don't... No, no, I'm not the deviant. I didn't say deviant. Presumably you get the ideas from real life. Uh, you know, they're, they're observations or things that you think might happen. And is, is it all for the comedy or... Is there any part of it that's you getting something off your chest? I don't, I don't, I'm not consciously trying to get things off my chest, I don't think. But things do occur where I go, this will be a, a good thing to do on my show, that had I said it at the time, I would have gotten something off my chest. Right. Like um, in the, this one scene that we did, uh, the check came and... They, we, Cheryl and I were out to dinner with another couple. Come on, Larry. No, 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 no splitting. Please. No splitting. You picked up the last one. Thank you, this. Stu. Anyway, thanks, Stu. That's very uh, nice of you. Thank My you. Pleasure. You're welcome. And about me, you can thank me, too. And thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Well, why, why do I have to thank you? <laughs> <laughs> For dinner? that my husband and I treated you to? Oh, I thought he treated me to it. Stu pulled out the credit card and put it down, yes. Yeah, so I thanked him. And he's using our money to pay for it. So you could thank us. We're taking you out to dinner. Well, you can call it our money, but just for the sake of discussion, he's the one who, who yeah. goes to work and earns the money. You don't, you don't work. So something like that came up in my life you know, I thank the wife. I'm not a sociopath. Of I, I can't say that, you know. Um, but I knew immediately that this is something I, I want to do on the show. So in that, in that sense, yeah, it does. It is a way to get things off my chest. Uh, the, the, the trouble is that I, that I have with watching Kirby Enthusiasm is that I agree with everything Larry says. Outside that sort of mild male autism where it's probably better that he doesn't always say what he's thinking, I think he's right. Well, that's why I like 
that Larry so much better than this Larry. Oh, it'd be great to be like yeah. him, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be freedom. great? Yeah. The freedom, not burdened by conscience. Absolutely. Not ringing people yeah. up and going, I'm so sorry. Just going, nah. Yeah. He's, he's happy, that guy. Look what's going on with this kid. <gasps> wow. Honestly, it's huge. It's a bigger penis than mine. He's got a bigger penis than me. We all have the good thoughts and the bad thoughts. But, you know, nobody ever expresses the bad thoughts. We just right. think them and we don't say them. <laughs> yeah. But the bad thoughts are funny. I saw your son at the school. Yeah. yeah. The kid's got some penis on him. He's pretty good. What, I, what, what are you saying? Your son. His what penis. You, wait, what, what are you saying that before? Hey, it's, Remember, a, it's, it's a compliment. What's the big deal? What, what's the compliment? I, I, well, how's it bad? It's, how's it bad? He's got, he's got a nice big penis. So what? Well, I'm not talking about your wife's tits. I'm, I, I mean, this is rude. You can, say, my, you can say my wife has nice tits as long as it's complimentary. And when you come back and you say that, you know, it's, I, I mentioned his, his kid's penis, she says... Why would you do that, Larry? <laughs> and you say, and this sums up what I think um, a comedian's mind, you say... I took a risk. <clears throat> and that's what comedians do. Uh -huh. Sometimes you think, well, mate, you know, it might go down well, it might not. But right. I just, I just say it. I mean, that's how we're all going through life, isn't it? Just not saying what we really well, we're going, want to say. And... We're going through life compromising. <laughs> exactly. Uh, for, 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 the, for the good of everyone. Right. Yeah. I suppose that's why people like yourself don't compromise in your art. That, that's where no one can get hurt. It's, right. It's just mm -hmm. to you. Art, you're allowed to be a complete fascist there's no mm, why, what about me it doesn't matter i don't yeah, care yeah, about yeah. you it says that you do your own program i'm in charge of this there should be no compromise in art i think it's because there's a i don't know about your case but in my case i'm such a liar in my life not <laughs> really well lying about or, or keeping oh, things to myself uh, or, seriously. You know I mean? yeah not really telling my true feelings mm. that uh i feel like i want to go completely the other way when I have the opportunity. And that's why you create superheroes like Larry. Well, I, th I think if you're any good, you, you kind of have to have a compulsion to tell the truth. Absolutely. Don't you think? A absolutely, <clears throat> yeah. And, and without, without guilt. Yeah. That's a bit, this is, this is, this is guilt-free truth. Comedy, yeah. I think. The other one is when um, you know there's a terrorist attack. It's good intel. It's going to happen. Okay. My brother, his best friend, works for the CIA. He got this information from the highest source possible that there's going to be a terrorist attack this weekend in L.A. Yeah. If there's going to be a terrorist attack, you should leave. Right. But Cheryl's got this event. Right. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, you got to yeah. get out of here. Actually, this is... <sighs> this weekend is a big NRDC benefit that we've been working what? on for months. And what? Alanis Morissette is going to be there. I mean, I'm just... I'm thinking out loud. I just... What? Why don't we I'm, go on a terrorist last and Could they pick another weekend that's more suited for you? We'll postpone the benefit. Let's get out of here. I thought I'd never say this, but Larry's right. And it, and it absolutely sums it up, where Larry, he says the thing that's on his mind, it might not be the right thing to express, but he's, he's totally right, morally. Well, <clears throat> maybe, uh, you know, maybe I can, I can go. And where are you going to go? Good go golfing at uh, Pebble Beach. Hey. Why do I have to go down with her? Yeah. Why is it all the burden on you to stay to her event? Why didn't she come with you and not be killed? Right. Surely it'd be better to not be killed together. She has the option of coming. She has the me. option. Yeah. You've given her the option. Yeah. She can't see that. If you feel good about one of us dying and the other one surviving and you can live with that for the rest of then you should go golf this weekend i'll think about, think it. about it the one thing about that scene that, that i should mention that's that's interesting is that that was completely um made up on the spot that wasn't even in the that wasn't in the in the script at all the, 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 the idea of the whole, just, yeah, the saying whole, yeah, that wasn't in the script at all. What happened was when Wanda leaves the house at that right. moment, and the two of us are left on the couch, the scene was supposed to end there, and, and nobody, uh, the director didn't yell, cut. Lovely. Again, it's the bad thought. It's a bad that thought. That usually goes unexpressed. Yeah.
With the writing process then, um, presumably you, you storyboard the whole trajectory and, and individual uh, uh, um, episodes, and then how does it get from the idea to, to screen? You know, I walk around with a little pad, and um, whenever I get an idea, I jot it down. And then I have a, a, another book where I take all the ideas and I, and I put them in another book. In uh, your best handwriting. Uh, in my best handwriting, yeah. yeah. So before I write a show, it's, uh, I'll just, you know, look in the books, and then I'll think, oh, that would be funny to do with that. Oh, well, those two ideas really would work well together. And so what would, what would a typical script say? Um, Laura, bring, bring, me a, bring me in a script. Oh, fantastic. Huh? I, I don't care. Bring me in anything. Bring me in something from, uh, uh, not this season. Bring me in something from season four. And, um, you know, so I'll take two or three ideas and kind of put them together and build a story. Okay, so this is... Uh, this is from the show, the, uh, the carpooling, when I picked up the uh, prostitute. Yeah. I'm not going to use the carpooling by myself, because I, do, I don't want to. Well, that's the difference between you and me. All right, goodbye. Hey, Daddy. You want a date with Mama? Get in the car. Uh, Larry and Monine are zipping along in the express lane. Larry tells her he doesn't want any sex, but he'll pay her for a time. She's never been paid for a time before. Uh, and she tries to figure out how many blowjobs and other forms of sex she normally have within that period, which Larry, of course, disputes. So, you know, you, there's, there's tracks to go on here. Exactly. I can get four blowjobs. An hour. Four blowjobs in an oh, hour? Oh, yes, I'm good, okay? Hey, I drove a cab. I used to drive around for two hours. I couldn't get a fare. You're telling me you're getting four blowjobs in an hour? Uh, yes, honey. You done picked up the best. Honey, I got a red snapper that talks to you. You know what it's saying? I'm charging way too much. There's actually more there than I imagined. Because yeah. it's like you're laying down the jokes, really. You, right. you are, you're laying down the, the structure and the tram lines for, for the, for the humour. Yes, and yeah. Then, do you pretty much know what you're going to get by the end of it? You know, if you've, if you've auditioned the actors, you've seen it at the audition, so you're confident that you'll get it, and, and you normally do. Has any, any of your shows improvised? Um, very little. You see, I mean, it's, that's, it's, it's, that's, it's, what's, that's what's so great about it, because it looks like it is. You know, it's all about, it's all about writing and casting, isn't it? And in your show, where, how do you know these people can do that? Because you're, you're asking so much of them, aren't the you? The lesson I've learned is always audition so you're confident that you'll get it and, and you normally do but sometimes we give out parts uh, to uh, a known actor christine. hi christine hi guys why don't you come up front eh. hmm? i'm okay come on up front i'm good i'm good are you serious yeah why what's the difference Larry, I'm not going to drive you around like I'm your chauffeur. Get in the fucking front seat, all right? Yeah, you're not driving me around like I'm a chauffeur. With two minutes from, from the rehearsal hall. You know, what kind of person asks another person to drive them around like this? This kind of mentality is what's... Whoa, whoa, what kind of person is so insecure that they have to make somebody move into the front seat so they don't think that they're driving somebody around? No, the kind of person that's so insecure that needs to be driven around in the back seat, subliminally, yeah, telling to do me, with me that being you need around. me to drive you around. Leave my seat. Go into the front seat. Because I asked you to sit in the front seat of my car, and it's my car, and uh, it's my car. I make the rules, okay? okay. What is this going to be cut down to? Uh, about an hour. An hour? You're kidding. It's an hour? It's a difficult question for you. I love Jewish humor, but I don't know exactly what it is. What's Jewish humor? <sighs> um, I don't, I, you know, I really don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I know that there's a lot of Jews in comedy. There's themes to Jewish humor that you could probably cite. Uh, neuroses. Don't you see the rest of the country looks upon New York like we're, we're left-wing communist Jewish homosexual pornographers? I think of us that way sometimes, and I, and I live here. There's a lot of complaining, I guess. Being dealt a bad hand. It's a tevia, isn't it? The weight of the world on your shoulders, Fantastic, complaining. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's a lot of that. And my parents really didn't like me. They told me I was Jewish on Christmas morning, and they just. <laughs> <laughs> wake up! Wake up! You're Jewish. <laughs> Empty stocking. But. Uh, and, <laughs> 
there's also a certain uh, rhythm, I think, to the way that Jews talk that might be funny. Every Jewish woman wants to think she looks Hawaiian. Don't I look Hawaiian? <laughs> People say I look French. I think I look Dutch. Do I look Spanish? You look Jewish, you drek yente. That's what you do. Well, yeah. Yiddish is funny already. Yeah, I, wanted, I wanted to learn Yiddish because the words... Yeah, amazing. it's, a, it's a great language. Yeah. There's a, 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 like a jazz to it. Yeah. I mean, like when you listen to Lenny Bruce's albums, there's a, there's a jazz to the way he, he talks. Titties are dirty and vulgar. No, it's the words, the way you relate. Are you sure it's the word, not the titty that's dirty to you? It's the words, all right? Suppose we change the words to tachases and nays. Well, that's a little better. I grew up loving um, the Marx Brothers. I've actually got a, a picture of Groucho. And there's just there's such an amazing quote. He, uh, he said when he was 80 years old, he said, um, I'm going to Iowa for an award. Then I'm appearing at Carnegie Hall. It's sold out. And then I fly to France to be honoured by the French president. I'd give it all up for one erection. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Eighty years old. Yeah. The the culture of yes. Jews being funny comes out of that. Comes out of the. Uh, I guess some kind of oppression. Because oppression would lead to humor, would it not? When you're in a terrible situation, the only thing you could do is be funny. Excuse me. Are you Jewish? <laughs> Are you Jewish? You want to check my penis? Okay. Huh? Is that what you want to do? My real question okay. is, yeah, what, what were you whistling? Yeah, what were you whistling? Hello, Dolly? No, it was Wagner. Oh, was it? Yeah. You, it's sir, major a hundred dollars. I want to know what a Jew is whistling Wagner for. Do you for want to know? he was one of the great anti-Semites of the world. You know what you are? What am I? You're a self-loathing Jew. Am I? Oh, well, yes, 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 yes. Jewish I do hate myself, you, yes. but it has nothing to do with being Jewish. Okay. But what have we got to be oppressed about? Me what? and you? What, what's, what's our no, issue? No, no, no. I mean, you've got Jewish. Yeah. I haven't even got that. Yeah, right. What, yeah, what's, what's your thing? Nothing. I'm a a white, middle-class bloke from England. I get annoyed at people eating too loudly, or a waiter not looking at me immediately, you know, or... Asking somebody the time and they go, you know, like, like they're doing you a big favor. Really yeah. annoys me. Yeah. And also, if there's two people and you bump into each other, yeah. right, it's, it's equal, we yeah. won't look either. I go sorry, they go... Yeah. Well, hold on, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you hit me too, I what know. What are you doing? I know. Yeah. And that, that makes my blood boil, which right. is weird. That's right. all I've got. Yeah. No one's dying. No one's starving. I, I, right. I haven't got any fatal diseases. But um, a wait has got yeah. the television on too loud. And he's not even... Well, it's, just, it's not yeah. for you, you know. And barmen have the television on. I was just getting to the age where I could ask, right? When you hit sort of like 36, you can go into a pub and say, can we have that telly off, mate? Yeah. Right? Then I became famous. And now I can't again. So I have to sit there and see it because I don't want anyone to go, right. oh, look, oh, he's changed. Yes, yeah, yeah, you exactly. He's, uh, people really want to say that too. Before it was, they're going to go, a bloke came into the room and he wasn't polite. Now they're going to say, Ricky Gervais came into the room, and he was, they can pinpoint who that person is. Oh, well, it, it affects your tipping, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what do you do? Yeah. What, do you, how, what do you up the tip? i got to double it, you know. But where, where, where does it stop with you? You give him $10, they go, $10 is nothing to you. Yes, I know. See, that's the thing. Obviously, everyone knew who Larry David was from Seinfeld, but they... Many people couldn't put a face to the name. Um, after um, the first season of Curb, how did it change you know, when your, when your picture was suddenly appearing in the paper as well? How did that feel? It actually was... It, it felt good. I'm just talking about just walking around and yeah. going shopping. You know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because people seem to be enthusiastic about the show and they seem to like me. It's kind of fun. It's like the world seems to be a, a friendlier place for me. It gives me more freedom. Right. Once I know people know who I am, it gives me a lot of license and freedom to behave in ways I would normally wouldn't behave. So it was, it was actually liberating for you? Yeah. I took the other route, and um, I, was very, I was suddenly very self-conscious, much more than I'd ever been. I end up just not, just not going out in public. I mean, I'm very nearly Howard Hughes. Don't you think it's weird for people to know, they think they know everything about you? We, I don't think we're meant to be recognised, are we, really? 
but people really love and respect you. So when they come up to you and they say something to you, it's always nice. It's, it's nice. as good as it yeah. gets. And right. Imagine if they hated you yeah. when you were famous. Right. right. You know? Exactly. That's what I'm that's saying. What, yeah. You know, I was on a show in the in the early '80s, first show, and I just bought this convertible and I, I took it out of the showroom. It was a Fiat convertible, and I put the top down, and, I, and I'm starting to make a little money. And I'm on this TV show, and I and I'm driving down Santa Monica Boulevard. I pull up at a light. And some guy yells out from the bus stop, your show stinks! Oh. Put the top, put the top <laughs> up. Yeah. And never put the top down again. That was it. Got rid of the convertible. Contrasted with that, this is, this is a hoot for me. I was, uh, I was in Florida last week, and I was just I was standing outside of a restaurant waiting for somebody, and a, a guy came up to me and said, are you alone? Do you want to come join, join me for dinner? I'm with, I'm with my wife. I said, no, that, that's okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. But it's sweet, you know. Yeah, well, it is very sweet. Yeah. It's, it's just that, what, what do you say? You yeah. have to say, I can't. I want to say, you've watched the show. Do you, you if, must know. If you, you must came know. up to that guy on the show, do you think he would want to go sit and have dinner with a stranger? <laughs> think about yeah. it. When do I start? Oh, he, he said it'll just be a couple minutes. So... So you don't want me to, to start, is that it? It's a couple minutes. You don't mind, do you? I just think it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, if you had your food come first, I would say, go ahead and start. I don't, what do I care? Well, I would wait for you to get yours. I really wouldn't want you to wait. I'd be uncomfortable if you waited. Well, I'd feel it would be polite to wait for your food to arrive. I think it's kind of impolite to prevent a person who's hungry from eating. Yeah, but we're supposed to be having lunch together. I mean, that, well, we that's we are what having lunch. What's the difference? Do we have to start at the exact same time? I don't get that. Well, I, I don't see why you can't wait two seconds for your cold sandwich. It's not like it's even hot. Well, I don't see why you care if I take a bite of my food. How does that bother you? Because we're having lunch together. So what? The two of us. I, I came from sort of nowhere, so there was like a, a, a mad sort of interest, a mad friendship, right, and that right. gave me the creeps. The interviews just, okay, you know, you get bored with talking about yourself, some of them are, are banal. I cringe every time I read anything, any interview, I, I cringe from it. Cringe. Because there's rarely a, a rapport with anybody who's talking to me. Mm. They don't listen even to what you're saying, they'll ask their question, and then they're waiting for you to give your answer, and then they ask their next question. There's never, a, it's never a conversation. It's always, you know what I mean? It's always it's just... This. They, yeah. they, they, they do this, they yeah. go. Um, yeah. uh, are there ever times yeah. when you just, you know, don't like what you've done? You go, you go, yeah. They yeah. Don't, yeah. Right, blah, 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 I'm, blah. Yeah. yeah. You obviously... <laughs> That's exactly it. When, That's what I'm talking moment, about. Yeah. Go right to the next one. And uh, the other one is, um, yeah. they go that, I go, yeah. okay. <laughs> Not, I want to go, you're not giving me anything. <laughs> I you know. know. I say to him sometimes, yeah. put, put that away. Talk to me. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you, you want, you want to yeah. hear. You want to hear. <laughs> That's an yeah. amazing answer. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, where did you meet Jerry? <laughs> yeah. Now, the other thing I have a hard time with is um, going on shows, talk That's shows it. and stuff like that. I, I only see a downside to it. I see me blurting something out, some faux pas that'll destroy me, you know. Like if I had something booked like a month from now, my, the, the whole month would be ruined for me. <laughs> I tried to get out of something today. Not this. No, no, not this. No, not this. I, I'm supposed to do this thing in, in uh, New York. They called me a year ago and I said no. And, and then they, I said, call me next year. Just to get out, just to yeah. get out of it. I call me next year. Yeah. Never thinking next year's going to come and there'll be a call. So, yeah. of course, they called me and... I, you know, I said, oh, okay, and now it's coming up, and it's on my mind. So uh, I, I called up to I said, um, I put on my funereal voice. I, I am so, so sorry. I, I, I cannot, I'm sorry. I cannot do it. I've got a lot of problems right now. I just, I just can't. I can't do it. I can't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And for 15 minutes, I told how sorry I was, okay? Okay, it made me feel so guilty, then called me back. I just spoke to my boss. We, you have to do this, you know. I said, all right, okay. You know, so now I'm doing it. And now the next two months are, um, are ruined for me. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because I, I, I will never have a day now where I don't think about having to go and do that now. Not one day. I won't have one day for the next two months.
I'm serious. That's all I'm going to think about. Everything's ruined. Yeah. You, you, you just forget about it for a while, and you have a lovely meal, then yeah. that adrenaline rush, and you go, oh. <laughs> exactly. Know. Oh, yeah, uh, now it's only a month away. Yeah. Am I all profile in this interview? I feel like I'm all profile. <laughs> You're seeing the whole big nose, all the whole thing, huh? Now, are you being yeah. funny there? No. Do you know you're being funny when it's on? Uh, were you funny as a kid? No, not especially. No? I don't think I was. No. I, I was doing, I would do stuff for the family. A little, you know, performance kind of stuff. Elvis and stuff like that. You right. know, I'd come in and do Elvis. But I wasn't witty, I don't think. I think you have to be a certain age to be funny. Yeah. I, 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 so few people under 30 are funny. You have to discover I'm, when you're inadequate in order to be funny. And you don't know you're inadequate Who when wants you're to a see kid. Funny. Feasibly good-looking, clever, popular people doing things brilliantly. Absolutely. Who cares? Yeah, I started to become funny when I realized I was inferior and inadequate. I, mine was when I got yeah. fat. Well, really, same same deal. Yeah, who's, the, who's an audience going to laugh at? The guy who gets up on stage and talks about... Um, how he got the girl, or the guy who's telling the funny story about how he didn't get the girl. Come on. You, you can't give yourself a, a cool role. We've got to be the putts. Mary? Hey. <laughs> Just a little bit. I asked you to be ready when I got back. Well, I'm... Have you even moved since I left this morning? Yes, of course. What are you talking about? I, I got up. I got up to tip room service. Have oh, you just my. retired, and this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, and you're never going to work again? Of course, I'm going to work again. When? I don't know. You're, I, you're I in the prime of your life. Are you just going to? Uh, no, I'm. Mm. I'm going to work when something comes up that I want to do. I would really like for you to get dressed, so we can go look at this house. Fine. Fine. Thank you. All right, here's Brittany. Brittany, come on out. Look at that girl come out. Look. Look at her. You don't know me. You don't know me. Yeah, you all know. Fuck yourself. That's right. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. No, yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. No, fuck you. I think you've managed to do it twice um, with Seinfeld and Curb Enthusiasm. Is to do that thing that so many comedians, stand-up comedians, fail at. It's getting real-life observations that they've had and rendering it with, with actors and not making it look contrived. You know, you, you know what I mean? Usually um, a stand-up comedian gets his pilot and he, he just crowbars in. Just, and it just looks like he might as well be talking to the camera. And then you want to go, well, that's good, but I know where you're going wrong. Because he's doing all this stuff from his act. <laughs> exactly, yeah. 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 Right. And I see these comedians yeah. on chat yeah. shows where yeah. when someone said, uh, they say things like, so, yeah. did you come on your bike, Larry? Oh, don't talk about bicycles. <laughs> oh, bicycles, schmicycles, listen. Oh. And it's just... Oh. I know, I know. This is crowbarring stuff in, you know, when you, when you work somewhere. It's crowbarring stuff in, but it's making it look like you're not. And that's why I think naturalism is so, is so big and high on the agenda now in comedy. You're a stickler as, as I am for, um, for reality. When something takes you out of that reality and it takes you completely out of the scene, don't you yeah. think? Yeah, I want to see someone get their hands dirty. I want to see a bit of their life. Yeah, also, um, I, I was never a big um, joke guy. No. You know, because, I mean, that's, that's the one thing about so many shows is that everybody's saying all these funny things, right? The audience is laughing, yeah. but nobody else is laughing. They're, exactly. They're saying jokes to their friends, yeah. and, and then the friend doesn't even smile. Absolutely. And then the friend says something else equally as funny. Like, everybody always has to say something funny. I remember the first time I saw that reversed was, uh, I think it's, is it Play It Again, Sam, when um, Willie Allen gets beaten up and he goes home and he starts making uh, Diane laugh. You got into a fight? Yeah. With who? Some guys were getting tough with Julia. I had to teach him a lesson. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I snapped my chin down onto some guy's fist and hit another one in the knee with my nose. Where's Julie? Oh, she ran off with the leader. I think they're getting married. They're heading for Mexico now. I never would have worked between Julie and me because she's Protestant and I'm Catholic and there's a great religious abyss between my... So who were these guys? Oh, they said they were uh, hairdressers. Oh, yeah. Hard to believe, though. Yeah. I think I, you, want, you want us to call a doctor? Yes. No, no, I'm fine. I, I, I could use a, a three-foot Band-Aid. Really pain subsides. She's laughing and my sex life is turning into the petrified forest. <laughs> Very funny.
you know what? You're very good at it, too. I've noticed the way, uh, you know, I know it's a show and everything, and I'm, I'm, t I'm serious. Listen, this is yeah. not, listen to it. What yeah. he's, whatever he says <laughs> is the truth. This is I the don't truth. know what he's going to say. Because he is one of the few people who actually has genuine laughter. You have laughter on, on your show, and you laugh. And, I, and I, when I watch it, I go, wow, it's great. It's great the way you did that. Yeah, well, it's, it's nice, you know. I, 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 just, I just think realism resonates more you can do you can you can go mad you can go you can go surreal you can you can go fast but as long as there's an element of realism and uh, recognition it's better it's like one time i went out with this bloke and we were in the pub and we were playing the quiz machine and it was for a fiver and the question came up who discovered america and i just panicked and i said colombo <laughs> oh I'll see you laughing because i'm there's, stupid no, it's an easy mistake to make they sound the same I did a, 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 an interview when they were asking me my favourite um, things and lists and stuff, and I put George Costanza as the best uh, sitcom character of all time. Hey, what are you listening to? Uh, my show from last night. Oh, you taped it? Yeah, I was doing some new material. Hey, did you ever do that thing on the toes that I said? Huh? You know how, like, the big toe is like the captain of the toes? <laughs> but, but sometimes the toe next to the big toe gets so big that there's, like, a power struggle, and, and the second toe assumes control of the foot? The coup d'etat. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you do it? Yeah. So? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. George Costanza famously is some of the things are borrowed from your, your real character. Why did you not play him? It was never even a consideration. Really? It, was, it was nothing that I even thought of, or Jerry thought of, or anybody brought up. It wasn't even on the table. I couldn't have done that and, uh, and written it, the show at the same time. It just would, it would be too hard. I couldn't do it. Uh, so this is the, the, the thing when uh, George finally gets to start writing for uh, you know, the, the pilot, and um, right. he sees two girls, and he thinks, well, now I can impress the ladies. Yeah. What do I do? Well, actually, I'm a writer. In fact, I'm uh, writing a comedy pilot for NBC right now. A sitcom? How can you write that crap? <laughs> Carol! This guy's writing a sitcom. A sitcom? I like to think that people go, that's the top of the tree. Don't waste your time with novels, right. plays, sitcoms where it's at. That's the top yes, of the tree yeah, exactly, in terms yeah. of artistry. Is there anything you want to do in television outside comedy? Would you want to do a drama or a film? Or oh, no, no. I would be completely lost, completely out of my element. It would be laughable. It really? Would be really? It would really be laughable, yeah. I couldn't do it. I, I would have no barometer for knowing that it's good. How would I know it's any good? Well, when, the, when, no, you, I wouldn't know. There's nothing. There's no guides. Well, you there's know? good drama. There is, and but, there's bad drama. Right, so. but people who are dramatists know when it's good. I'm. I wouldn't know if it was good or not. But how did you know you knew it was good when you started writing comedy? If not, there was good comedy and bad comedy. If people laughed. You know, people when were laughing at this comedy club where people were going, "What the fuck." <laughs> It's that thing. You, I go to one of those comedy clubs, and people go there and go, uh, anyone here smoke? Any put smoke weed? Get the munchies, don't you? What they should do. That, and I, I'm, I'm looking round at people, and they're going, yeah, you do get the munchies! You get the munchies! I'm, they're bursting. I haven't heard this stuff before. A, I know, it's unbelievable. I think, well, it? yeah. you're all idiots. Yeah. They're just, oh, forget it then. If you're... If you're saying what everyone's thinking, you're not doing anything. Yeah, there's a fine line there, because you, you don't know. Are people laughing because they thought of it, or because they thought of it and now they're hearing it? Or... Well, I think comedy has to be recognition, but uh, it's absolutely pointless doing uh, comedy to a room full of people that could just about do it themselves. What I want to do is I, I want to do things that nobody else can think of. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You wanna, you wanna, that's, that's what you want to do. You know, so many times when I'm watching your shows, I'm, I'm going... I wish I would have thought of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well. You know what I mean? I suppose that I want the right laugh. I, I want to look right around. Yeah. I want to look around and go, right, uh -huh. they're not laughing. That's a good sign. Yeah. That's good. I didn't want them to laugh. <laughs> right. I don't want you to like... I don't want you liking my comedy. Well, I had, I had plenty of that when I was doing stand-up.
I heard a rumor that sometimes you'd go out and you look at the audience and go, no. Nah. Yeah, I did that. I did that once. Yeah. And w was that heartfelt? That oh, wasn't totally. a gimmick. That, that was wasn't a gimmick. You looked I, I out. got up on stage. I looked out at the audience. I kind of took them in. I looked around. <laughs> what, they like? what, what was the demographic that said to you, they're not going to like this just, stuff? Just people I sensed no connection with. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody I ever wanted to sit down with and talk yeah. to. I didn't want to be talking to. I could tell on first sight. You know, my... my um, Hen parties and yeah. bachelor parties. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> exactly. The warm-up guy yeah. throws stuff out and shows his ass. Right, yeah. yes, yes. Brilliant. Yeah, right. And I looked out and I went... No. Yeah. <laughs> and then I left. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, after Seinfeld and with your success, obviously you, you never have to work again. What what drives you? What what drives you to 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 keep going? Yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> My mother always said you need a place to go. Yeah. You got. I agree. You, you gotta you need a place to go, no matter what it is. You have to get out of the house and have a place to go every day. What would you be doing if you if You'd given up comedy. You came back from New York. Forget it. I'm not going to forget it. You I mean, didn't I'm not going to do any writing or anything. Yeah. Well, what if it? You know, to, to go back 20 years, you gave up. What would you be doing now? Do you think? You mean I'd have to have another job, right? Well, I assume so. Okay, so I'm quitting show business. You quit 20 years ago. You I quit, quit show business 20 years ago. And now I need a new job. Yeah. That's a good question. Now, what would I do? I have no skills. What would I do? I don't know. Sell. Uh, Entrepreneurism. Sell. Sell, I... sell cars. Hi, I'm Larry. Hey, Larry. Archie. You know what? My wife's name is Veronica. So, this is the uh, Camry I heard about, huh? This is the big boy, the top of the line. This is as good as it gets. Oh, really? You know, you hear Lexus, Lexus, Lexus. What's... You don't hear Camry, Camry. But that's what you should be hearing. Well, tell me, what's, the, uh, what's in the engine here? What's in it? Big stuff. Big charging, crazy <laughs> pistons, nutty pistons. Was it twin cam? Yeah, twin cam. What other colors? This is a fucking work of art. What's your name? Uh, Shirley. Shirley? Yeah. That's my mother's name. Um, a tilt wheel steering, which I really like. Does this car have that? Does it standard? You know, you don't have the need to tilt in this car. I've never had a tilting need. I heard that these uh, SUVs, that they uh, sometimes they roll over rather roll easily. Roll over? Are you yeah. kidding? Look at this thing. Look at this. Look at this. Well, thank you so much. That's... Uh, Absolute pleasure. I think I think we got plenty. We've got plenty. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That, that was yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank That's you, Ricky. Amazing. Yeah. I'm going to get you the um, the 2,000 year old. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I think I've heard of that title. It, it, what is it on on audio? Yeah. I, are you? Can you come up with it? Oh, you did. Oh. Um, okay. Have we got that? No, it's an album. We did. And if it means something to you, you can cry. You know what? I'm looking at your eyes, and I see no evidence at all that anybody was crying. Usually when someone finishes crying, they won't be evidence away that was ever a tear. And did you wipe it away? Yes, I did. And the evidence for that is in the bin, on a tissue. Oh, is that so? Check it out, Columbo.